In this module, we're going to discuss different ways of doing restores with Retrospect. On the left side of the main Retrospect window, I click on Restore, and then it will show me the wizard mode. In this example, we're going to go into Advanced mode, and we're going to choose Restore Files and Folders, and click OK. And then we choose our source. This is the backup set that contains the actual backup data, and the bottom half of the window we can choose the snapshot that contained the original files. In this case, it shows different folders or disks that I've been backing up. I'm going to choose the Dell folder and click OK. And then I click on Destination. And then I can select where I want to restore my files. In this case, I choose the C drive. And I leave the default option of Retrieve Files and Folders, which will copy files and folders to a new folder on the C drive. I click OK. And then I click on Files Chosen. Inside Files Chosen, I can look at the contents of the Dell folder as it appeared on the date of the snapshot. And if we look back here, it actually shows us this is the date and time that the backup took place. And this is representation of what was on the drive at that date and time. So I can go ahead and I can select a couple of items I want to restore. Click OK. And then we go ahead and we can see that it shows that six files are selected for restore. And then we can execute this restore. Retrospect will go out to the backup media and then begin restoring data. If your data is spread over multiple pieces of media, Retrospect will ask you to insert each appropriate piece of media in sequential order. Now, if I minimize Retrospect and I go to the C drive, which I had chosen as my destination, I will have a folder there called Backup Set A. This is a folder that contains the restored data. Whenever you do a restore using the Retrieve Files and Folders method, Retrospect will create a folder with the same name as the backup set. And inside that folder will be the hierarchy of all the items you asked it to restore, along with each of the individual files that you told it to bring back. If we close this window, we can return to Retrospect, and then if we go back to the main window, we can click on Restore again, and go back to Advanced Mode, Retrieve Files and Folders, and we can go through the steps once more. So the source is the backup set that contains the original files, or a different backup set if you have multiple backup sets. Now one of the things I see here is my Dell folder, and it has a specific date. Well, if I need to get a file that was in that folder at a prior date, I can click this button that says Add Snapshot. And in the Add Snapshot window, it'll show me all the prior versions of that folder as they existed on specific dates and times. I can choose an oldest version of that, click Retrieve. Then Retrospect will go out to the backup media and retrieve the older version of that snapshot. Once the older version of the snapshot has been retrieved, it'll appear in this list with the appropriate date and time. So now I can restore the drive containing files from a prior backup date. So I choose the Dell folder from the older date and I click OK. And then I can go to my destination which once again could be Drive C. And then I go to Files Chosen and I can mark all the files or just some of the files. And I click Restore and then it'll begin the restore process once again. This time because the hard drive already contains a folder named Backup Set A, it actually is going to create a new folder on the drive. And that folder is backup set A-1. So that I know that's the, you know, the second time the restore has taken place. And if I look in there as it's actually being restored, it shows me that these files are on the drive. Let's return to Retrospect and take a look at some of the other restore options. So I click on Restore again, and then that Restore option. And I choose Switch to Advanced Mode, Retrieve Files and Folders. And then I choose my source. And we've seen this, we've seen the Add Snapshot button, where we can pick prior, prior versions of a specific disk. So we'll choose that one, and click OK. Now under Destination, we have a pop-up menu here. And I can do several things. I can restore the entire volume so that all the files go back to where they came from originally, replacing the ones on the hard drive with the ones that are on the backup, replacing corresponding files, which will restore identically named files that have changed back to their original path, replace if backup is newer, which restores only files that are newer than the ones that are on the hard drive, 
Restore missing files only, which fills in files that may have been deleted. Retrieve files and folders, which are the default, which once again creates a new folder with the name of the backup set and restores the files into that new folder. And then retrieve just files, which restores all the files to a folder, but does not include any actual folders in the restore. It gives you a flat file structure with no subfolders. If I want to do this restore to a specific folder, rather than restoring to a backup set A folder, I have the ability to go in and choose this sub-volume option, and then I have a new folder button up here in the upper right, and I can say My Restore. And by choosing My Restore, I can define that folder as a sub-volume, and then ask it to do a retrieve, let's say restore an entire volume. Replacing all contents of the My Folder or my restore folder on local disk. So I choose that folder and I click OK. Then Retrospect warns me, really restore to my restore on local C replacing all contents. Because this is a brand new folder, that's safe because there are no contents in the folder at this moment. So I click replace. And so if I go to files chosen and I mark all the files and I click OK, Retrospect says that I have 172 files selected for restore and it will leave 16.5 gigs free. So now if I were to execute the restore, it's going to restore the contents into the My Restore folder on the C drive. Okay, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to look at some of the other options that are available to us instead. We're going to re return to the destination selection window. And inside here, we're going to change it to the replace corresponding files option. And we're actually going to choose the folder that the files came from originally, which was the Dell folder. And we're going to click OK and let Retrospect do its scan. And we'll notice here that it says 172 files are selected for restore, and 172 files appear already copied. So when Retrospect does a restore, it does an incremental restore, and it's smart enough to know that it does not need to restore files that are already on the drive. And that will save a lot of time when you're doing large restores of big disks where maybe only a couple of files have disappeared along the process. Now, if we go ahead and execute the restore, Retrospect will go through the motions, but in reality, it's not going to do anything. As you can see, it very quickly went to a restore progress window. If we look at the history, it says the restore was completed successfully, and if we scroll down just a little bit, it says that there's zero files remaining and zero files completed because it was able to copy everything all immediately because there was nothing there to really copy.